Hey guys, Susan Thomas here, and today I want to talk to you about a simple way to get started soldering. So after I've been making jewelry for a few years, I decided I wanted to advance my skills and get into soldering. So I took a class, I learned how to do it, and I was great at it, and I'm like, Awesome, I know what I'm doing. Went back to my studio and I sat down, got my metal out, I was gonna make some stack rings, and guess what? I couldn't do it. So there was a few things that I didn't realize I needed to have in order to be successful soldering. So I wanna go through all those things for you and teach you guys a really simple way to get started. First of all, you're gonna need a fireproof surface, and this is just a soldering board. You're gonna have that right here in front of you so that when you have your flame, you can direct the flame right at that and not at your workbench. And speaking of your flame, you're also going to need to have a torch of some sort. Now, this is a great torch. It's a small torch, and I'm gonna show you guys how to use that in just a minute. You're also going to need something to keep yourself from burning your fingers. We're gonna hold our metal in this. This is called a cross lock tweezer. It opens and closes like that, and that way we can put our metal in here and set that on there. Don't have to touch it while it's hot. You're also gonna need a soldering pick, and you're going to need solder. Now, here's the thing that confused me from the very beginning. This solder contains something called flux. Now I know you're thinking, what's flux? Flux is what makes solder flow, no flux, no solder, no flowing, okay? It doesn't work without flux. So what I love about paste solder is it already includes the flux in the solder. So you don't have to worry about having another element here with you like a bottle of flux to make your solder flow. So very important when you're getting started to use something like this because it just makes it simpler. And uh, the thing that confused me at the beginning was the flux because if you look up flux on the internet, you'll find there's a lot of different kinds of flux. There's paste flux, there's spray flux, there's flux that you can paint on. I mean, you name it, it's out there. So it's great to have something like this to get started with. Okay, so I'm gonna start out just by making some simple rings because when most people first learn to solder, what they want to learn how to solder is the jump rings on the ends of their necklaces to keep things more secure. So I'm gonna show you guys how to make simple rings using some sterling silver wire and my paste solder. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna make a ring out of your sterling silver wire. So I've got a tool here, it's a wrap and tap plier and I am just going to form a ring out of my wire and I'm going to cut that with my flush cutter. It's really, really, I'm just gonna say really one more time, important that you flush cut your rings because you wanna make sure that there is no space between the two ends of your wire. So you wanna flat flush cut on both sides so that when I bring this together, those two ends fit together perfectly. And if you're having a little trouble with that, one thing you can do is you can kind of overlap it like so and overlap it like so and then just make sure that those two ends come together perfectly so there's no air. And the reason you need to do that is because solder will not fill a gap. And uh, I say that it will not fill a gap and it did do one time for me and it was when I was doing a live demonstration so I don't wanna hear it from you guys but it does not fill a gap and the reason is because solder follows the heat and so if I get my solder here and there's a gap, what'll happen is it'll either go to one side of your joint or the other and that is the number one reason why most people are not successful soldering. So I've got my ring made, I have my joint nice and flush and I have it set up in my third hand, my cross lock tweezer here to make sure that it does not burn me. And then I'm gonna take some of this paste solder and I always squeeze a little bit out onto the corner of my soldering board, just like so, before I do anything else. And then I've got my pick ready and I'm just gonna move all my tools out of the way so that I don't get things hot while I work. Now, this is your torch. There's a few things you need to know about this torch in order to use it. Right here, this is your safety, so you need to pull that down. And when you pull that down, you can then press this button, which lights the torch. Now, if I let go of that button, it turns off. So, what you need to do is you need to pull down the safety, press the button to turn it on, and then on the other side, right here, there's a little button that you pull back, and that is your continuous flame, so I can let go of that, and my torch will keep going. And then on this side, I have the little high-low button, which makes it lower or higher, just like that, up and down. So those are all the elements of the torch. Now, if you look at this flame right here, I want to point out to you this little spot right here. The very tip of that blue flame, that's the hottest part of your torch. If I put my solder pick right here, you can watch, it's going to start glowing. 
See that, how fast that started glowing? Now I'm gonna cool it off. But now I'm gonna put it back here in this part of the flame and I want you to see how long it takes to start glowing. Yeah, see, it's not glowing. And that's because it's relatively cold back here in this part of the flame. So when you're soldering, you always wanna make sure that you concentrate right here on the tip of that flame. So cool off your solder pick. One of the things that people do is when they're soldering, they'll get their solder pick hot and they have a hard time picking up their solder because it melts off the end of the solder pick. So make sure you cool it off every time you do that. Now, I do not have to flux this ring if I don't want to because the solder paste includes flux. Flux equals flow. As long as I have that, I will be able to solder. I am going to use some flux on my ring to keep it clean when I am heating it. So. I'm just gonna turn on my torch and I am going to heat it up just a little bit and spray a little bit of flux on there and get it ready to go. And then I'm gonna take a little tiny bit of my solder and you do not need very much. See how much I have on there? That's probably still a little bit too much, but you don't need very much of the solder. And then concentrating the flame right at that tip on my joint, I'm gonna heat up my piece and I am then going to put just a little bit of solder right where I want it and then reheat just until I see it flow. And you can tell it flow when it gets really, really silvery and shiny. And then I'm just gonna take that ring off there and I'm going to drop it into my pickle. I did not mean to actually stick the end of that tool in there. You should always just use a copper tong in your pickle. All right, so let me do that again so you guys can really get up close and personal with that. So first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna make a ring, like so. Second thing you're gonna do is you're going to flush cut it. So with a flush cutter, make sure that you turn the flush cutter so that both sides are flat and smooth. Then you're gonna make sure that your joint is really, really tight and pop that back inside your cross lock tweezer. And then I'm gonna turn on my torch, so pull down my safety, turn on the torch, pull back the continuous flame, and then just heat it up a bit and add a little bit of your flux to keep your metal clean. And then take a tiny bit of solder, solder on, and let it flow. Super easy. Now, you saw a little bit of a flame come up from the solder. Don't be scared when that happens because this paste solder has a little bit of organic matter in it and it will burn off. So don't let that scare you and stop you from doing that because that is supposed to happen. So then I'm just gonna put that into my pickle right there and I'm gonna take my copper tong and pull this out of here so you can see that this is soldered. So. This little bowl right here is not just a quench bowl, it's a bowl full of pickle. And pickle is what cleans the metal after you solder it. So you're gonna get a little bit of something called fire scale on your metal right where you soldered. So you put it in the pickle. You have to be very careful with your pickle. You always want to make sure that you use a copper tong to pull out your rings from the pickle. And the reason is if you put something in it like steel, it actually does something called contaminating your pickle. And never, you never wanna contaminate your pickle. <laughs> because uh, what happens is the steel gets in your pickle and then it will get on your rings that you made, maybe your sterling silver ring, and it will actually discolor it. So once you've contaminated your pickle, you actually have to toss it and start over again. So you wanna make sure that you always use a copper tong. So there you go, now we have got two little rings here and these are really cute. They can be used as jump rings or we could also use them as little stack rings. If I wanted to, I could texturize those and make them into little stack rings like these to wear. Lots of different things you can do with those and I love them. So don't forget the essential items that you're gonna need to get started soldering. A soldering board or fireproof surface, your torch, solder pick, cross lock tweezer to keep from burning your fingers, and of course, your paste solder, which already has the flux in it. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to pick up some of the supplies like we used today, check out the links down below. Is there anything else you'd like to know about soldering? Talk to me about it in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you again next time.